So now that several videos have popped up on the internet, it is my turn to make my video, my thoughts on the HTC Desire I and the Recam. Let's get in. Hi guys, good morning. Lovely Friday. Friday's topic of the day is the HTC Desire I and the Recam. Um, Something that's just been kind of floating around. Everyone's just, you know, having this really big buzz about it. And I wanted to share my thoughts about these uh, two devices that are coming out. And um, let's start off with the HTC Desire I because this is where it's at. This is what I've wanted to see for a long time in a smartphone. Um, so let's, well, we're not, we're not going to go over the specs. Um, the specs and stuff like that most people will go for when they actually decide to try and buy it but what it's intended for its purpose that is the main point of this phone and the purpose for it is to actually take good if not some of the greatest pictures and videos that you could ever take with a smartphone so the front has a 13 megapixel camera and the rear camera is 13 megapixels and that's unheard of you don't really hear that going on with most devices nowadays and it's something that I think that a lot of people were wondering why hasn't this been done before you know with most devices from the past having really big bezels and bezels has always been one of the things and one of the topics that people have talked about when they do unboxings and reviews of devices they always talk about the bezels so since we had big bezels back in the day basically we had enough room to actually match the rear camera to the front and that's something that I think that should have been done a long time ago but hey better late than never. The whole point behind the HTC Desire I is focusing on picture and video quality and video picture taking. So you have all these different options that you can do with it. A couple of options that I saw was that you could actually do a dual video mode. That's great. Dual mode and video or picture. So that's even better. And there's another option where you can actually like take a picture from what's behind with the rear camera but place yourself in that scene without actually having to stand there so you can actually use a front facing camera to pretty much get your portion right here and you can put it what's behind with the rear camera and you can you know like size crop yourself you can do um, just a lot of things with it and one of the big things you can do is before you take a picture you can actually pre-edit the photo you can fix blemishes, fix color tones and everything before you take the shot. Now that is amazing in my eyes because people who are big Instagrammers, who are big on PixArt, who even Snapchat, you know, just to take a quick photo or whatever. Um, these things are going to be really awesome in that effect. And so, you know, I got to say, that's, a, that's two thumbs up. And uh, to HTC for doing this. This is actually great and hopefully this sets off a trend for other OEMs to actually start including matching megapixel cameras for the front and rear rather than just having a weaker camera on the front and a weaker and, and a you know stronger camera on the back. So you can think about it, even if you're not someone who takes pictures, what are some of the things you could do with the HTC Desire Eye? Well, let's say if you like to video chat with family, you wouldn't have to rely on a laptop or anything. If you have a strong camera on the front, you know, being on a video call with your device is going to be a breeze, and if not, clarity is going to be the big thing there. You know, you're going to stand out more, the lighting is going to be okay, because we all know that with the weaker megapixel cameras, lighting situations becomes, like, very frustrating. If you have anything under a 2 megapixel, and if you're using a 2 megapixel camera that was, you know, it's not really using high quality, you're still going to get some washed out, dark looking scenes. And so with a 13 megapixel camera in the front, you're expected to actually have better video, video call qualities. That's always great. Motorcycle driving by. Um, so what are the downers of this device? Well, the biggest downer is, and this is this one thing that I'll probably blog about in the future, but um, exclusive. That is the word that really kills it for me. Exclusive. And the reason why exclusive kills it for me is because it's going to be exclusive to AT&T, which um, to me, again, that's just like a slap to the face to everybody who would actually want to try this out. Because there are people who have their 
their love for their respective carriers that they are on. They don't want to change. Um, I could see this device easily being unlocked and going to T-Mobile. So T-Mobile fans, you know, you guys have nothing to worry about. You know, you pick up the device, you unlock it, slip your SIM card in, you're good to go. But people for like, you know, Verizon and Sprint that are CDMA are not really going to get the chance to actually enjoy this just yet. Um, is it possible that these devices will go to Verizon and Sprint? Sure. You know, I mean, look how many times that they've made uh, exclusive devices only to AT&T and then six months later, you know, it just starts going all across the boards. You know, that's not the question there. But the point is, is that when you make something exclusive and it only comes out to one carrier at first, it kind of does kill the buzz a little bit. Other than that, I do expect this to actually go across all boards here because eventually they're going to, you know, HTC is in the business of making money and they're going to want their stuff to get out there. So with that being said, uh, yeah, but for Boost Mobile, Virgin Mobile, Cricket Metro, I highly doubt it. Well, Cricket and Metro, you know, like I said, if you unlock, you use SIM card, you're good to go. But with Boost and Virgin, forget that. Um, let's talk about the Recam, because the Recam is actually something that people are kind of like either making fun of or thinking it's like a wow factor. So the Recam basically looks like this uh, little, little scope from a submarine, basically. Um, it's just basically like a like a candy cane style or macaroni elbow looking uh, camera device it's uh, it's actually it's actually fairly fairly decent size i would say um from the video that i watched it's probably like almost the height of my e-cigarette just about yeah i'd say that just if we turned it over um now people were talking about the death of flip cam and so people are wondering what is the point of the recam basically the recam actually syncs with your htc device and so what you record from it will actually show up on your device. You can actually use your device as a remote to control the recam. Actually, that's how it functions, basically. I wouldn't say you can. That is how it functions, so that's how it's gonna you know, work. Now, one of the things is, is that it is uh, water resistant uh, up to one meter for 30 minutes, but there is accessories you can buy for the recam that will allow it to be submerged in water a lot longer. So, a lot of people think that this is gonna flop only because of, you know, what it can do and of course people comparing it to the GoPro and what the GoPro can do compared to the Recam. However, I actually, you know, watching the video thought of a few things that people can actually do with this. One is use it as a cam to YouTube. For a lot of YouTubers out there who maybe don't have access to a laptop or maybe they just want to, you know, shoot from a mobile device, this would actually be perfect for them because they can actually use their mobile device to actually see how they look you know, besides using the phone, and use that camera position to actually, you know, do like unboxings, reviews, and things like that, etc. Um, of course, it does make sense you can get a bracket like I do for my Galaxy S2 that I'm shooting from right now and stick it to your tripod, but maybe they don't, they don't have a tripod, and so the Recam would actually be something cool that they can use to make YouTube videos and stuff like that. So, uh, there are there is a purpose for it, you know, besides the fact that some people are going to joke about it, but uh, the price point is what's really going to kill it because it's actually going for $199.99, basically $200 for this, and I really don't see anyone wanting to pay $200 for that when they can just get a new smartphone with $200. If the price point was set anywhere between $79.99 to maybe $150, you know, $150 kind of like cutting it close, $79.99 kind of like being like where... You know, I would think a camera like that would actually be positioned in price-wise for people to actually want to pick it up. Um, maybe okay there, but $200 is really what's going to kill it. But there is a purpose for the Recam, and I just gave you guys one. YouTube. You guys can YouTube for it or whatever you guys want to do from it. So, um, on top of that, uh, just to close this out real quick, I did get an email from Kyocera. I sent my own email to them to get a reply back for the Kyocera Hydra Icon, and I got told the same thing. At the end of October, the Kyocera Hydra Icon should be expecting KitKat 4.4. So, um, probably in a week and a half, I'm going to do a video to how to unroot your Kyocera Hydra Icon. I'm going to unroot mines and get it successfully unrooted. And then I'll show you guys how to do it for those who have actually rooted the Kyocera Hydra Icon. You need to unroot before this update comes out so you can apply the update. And once we have applied the update, then I will look for methods to reroot the icon on KitKat. So anyways guys, thanks for watching this vlog today. As always, if you guys like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up uh, because it really helps me out. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, subscribe for more content like this and others. And you guys can view the list of my videos that I have on this channel. And again, don't forget about the giveaway. We're coming close to the 30th. So on the 30th at 11.59 p.m., I'm closing out submissions to 
people who want to win one of the five Google Play gift cards valued at $10. So, um, small giveaway. But anyways, guys, yeah, 10-minute video. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are awesome.